General Kenobi. <laughs> you are a bold one. <laughs> What's going on, guys? I'm the Walrus Jedi, and welcome back to the Alien Species series. And uh, in this video, it will be the Kalish. So, uh, yeah. Please consider liking and subscribing if you would like to uh, see this series continue. And uh, in the comment section down below, you can you can pick the next species for the next episode. So, all right, let's get to the Kalish and their home planet, Kali. All right, Kali. It is located in the outer rim. It has rainforests, canyons, and seas. Its diameter is 13,850 kilometers. It's, uh, it has 23 standard hours for its day and 378 standard days in its year. It has a population of 4 billion. Its sentient species is the Kalish. And the species on the planet are... 99% Kalish and 1% other. The language spoke is Kalish. Their government is tribal. They have no major exports and their major imports are foodstuffs and technology. And their uh, system is the Abaji Imanek system. And then some planets or moons. You have Preli, which is molten. Norbin, which is airless. Abaji Minor is terrestrial. Kali is terrestrial. You have Torviskal, which is also terrestrial. Remsh is a gas giant. And Elk is a frozen rock. Alright. Kali is an outer rim planet best known as the homeworld of General Grievous. Its history is marked by near-continuous warfare, explaining why so much of the population is trapped in desolate poverty. The planet is a hot world covered with mossy cliffs, dark seas, sweeping steppes, and steaming jungles. The stone monolith of Abesmi, jutting skyward from the waters of the Genoa Sea, is an object of adoration to the native Kalish, who believe it is where their gods ascend to heaven. Shrines can be found all over the planet, honoring historic figures who battled their way to divinity. The holiest such shrine is Shrupak, at the gateway to the steppes of uh, Asuz. All Kalish prize the path of the warrior, and wear the skulls and hides of Mumus and Karabax as ritual adornments. Nearly all sea life on Kali is poisonous. Kali is on the outer border of the Kadok regions, squeezed between two belligerent civilizations, but the, the Bithavarians on the rimward side and the Yamri to the coreward. Nearly a century before the Battle of Yavin, the Republic convinced the Kalish to fight the Bitavarians in order to unseat a regime considered unfriendly to Coruscant. Decades later, the mantis-like Yamri embarked on a crusade of expansion, battling their way to Kali until beaten back by Kimianjai Shalil Shilal, oh, a charismatic Kalish warlord. Shilal took the fight all the way back to the enemy's homeworld of Huk. The beaten Yamri pleaded with the Republic for help, and Coruscant ended the war and levied heavy sanctions against Kali. With the world already depleted by warfare and overhunting, the restrictions pushed the planet into famine and cannibalism. Shilal who by that point had taken the name Grievous, entered into the service of the intergalactic banking clan. In return, the IBC assisted Kali with loans and supply connections. Kali escaped the Clone Wars intact, but Grievous was counted among the war's casualties. The planet has honored its late champion with a temple of his own, in a lofty place in the Kalish Pantheon. The Kalish are a reptilian humanoid species native to the outer rim world of Kali. They are an attractive group, similar in appearance to the Falin in some respects, though the Kalish's scaled skin is reddish-orange and they have two sharp tusks that protrude outward from their jawbones on each side of their faces. Jet-black hair cascades from their heads, usually worn tied back in braids. Yellow reptilian eyes, 
with elliptical irises give them fairly average eyesight, although Kalish possess a thermoreceptor gland directly next to their eyes with which they can see into the infrared spectrum for a short range, as can many hunter snakes. The Kalish are a polygamous people, with each male having multiple wives and many offspring, but whether this is a cultural tradition or a practice instituted to meet a societal or biological need, as in the case of Syrians, with their low birth rate and imbalanced male-to-female ratio, is unknown. Despite their relative attractiveness, the faces and bodies of the Kalish are rarely exposed. Most wear masks made of the skulls and teeth of their world's fiercest predators, the Karaba and the Mumus, to conceal their faces. Kalish also cover their bodies completely for defense against the harsh sun of their homeworld, and usually their four-fingered claw-like hands are the only aspect of the Kalish that can be seen. In addition, the families of the elite Kalish warriors wear hereditary battle masks that are passed down within a house's line from one generation to the next. These masks are painted with Karaba and Mumu blood prior to a battle in patterns that are unique to each family. After being used in combat, they are cleaned and stored until they are needed again. The Kalish are a nomadic tribal people and have become spacefaring only recently. During the waning years of the Old Republic, Kalish tribes united under a common leader who would later be known as Grievous to fight off an invading insectoid race called the Huck. The Huck had already conquered and subjugated other worlds, plundering them of their natural riches. With Baron Kali, they sought to exploit the only commodity available to make a profit, people. The Huck captured Kalish by the hundreds and sold them as slaves. Under Grievous's leadership, the Kalish banded together and drove the Huck from their planet. In the process, the Huck were completely decimated, pushed back to their own world and even beyond, as Grievous, seeking revenge, co-opted Huck technology and ships for his own use, conquering their entire system and preying upon their colonies as well as their home world. The Huck, utterly overwhelmed by the vitriolic, vitriolic hatred and violence of the Kalish, sought help from the Old Republic, which, through the backdoor manipulations of unknown forces, sympathized with the Huck and enacted economic sanctions against Kali, enforced by the Jedi. Grievous withdrew to his homeworld angry and vengeful, to soon find it driven into the dust under the weight of economic sanctions, witnessing his people starving and watching hundreds of thousands dying from famine, Grievous grew even more contemptuous of the Republic and the Jedi who protected it. As if in answer to his woes, the intergalactic banking clan, headed by a mune called San Hill, offered Grievous a deal through which he could help his people financially. With his masterful military commanding skills, he would act as a collection agent against worlds that had defaulted on loans provided by the banking clan. Though Grievous bristled at being a paid heavy, he took the offer. After all, the clan promised to relieve some of the terrible debts and financial stress levied upon his people, not to mention arranging to have the economic sanctions lifted. For the most part, the banking clan did live up to the bargain, as did Grievous, delivering the debts of several planets to them. And yet, the favorable relationship was not to last. When the Trade Federation refused to punish Grievous's old enemies for desecrating Kalish burial grounds on the Hux colony worlds, Grievous abandoned his job, starting another conflict. The intergalactic banking clan decided to repay him for his lack of commitment by setting off an explosive device in his ship. However, this attack was actually another ploy to keep Grievous under its sway, as the intent was never to kill him, but to make Grievous dependent and controllable. Wounded in the subsequent crash and suffering from additional injuries carefully inflicted afterward, Grievous was given a new cyborg body by Count Dooku and San Hill, who also secretly altered his mind, all with the help of the Geonosians. Without Grievous's knowledge, and despite promises made to the contrary, Grievous's sense of honor as a warrior was removed, turning him into an unscrupulous conqueror. After this, the great Kalish military commander became little more than a lackey for the Separatists, until his eventual death at the hands of Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi. Following the fall of the Republic, and during the expansion of the Empire, 
the Kalish were generally overlooked until the New Republic rose to power. They remain a warlike people, although they are only known to be combative if provoked by outside forces. Extremely protective of what they consider sacred, the Kalish follow a religion that centers on ancestor worship. Their lands and burial grounds hold particular importance. Kalish believe that those who die in self-sacrifice and with honor are added to their pantheon of gods, and as a result, any burial ground is a holy place. The primary area of worship for Kalish is an island called Abesmi, located in the middle of the warm world's single ocean, where it rises from the waves as a rectangular black formation of rock. This place is said to be the spot where Kalish ancestors descend from and rise to the heavens. It is customary to undertake pilgrimages to Abesmi, though most Kalish can make their proper worship commitments in local sculpted shrines that point in the direction of the legendary island. One of these newer shrines was built in honor of General Grievous, who is now a revered member of the religion's heavenly pantheon. Well, that is the Kalish and uh, their homeworld, Kali. Obviously, their uh, most notable member that most people would be familiar with is obviously General Grievous, although we only know him in his cyborg form and not in his original Kali form, which is a shame, but uh, yeah. So, let me know what you thought of the Kalish and Kali in the description. You can let me know what you thought of the Kalish and Kali in the comment section down below. Tell me what your favorite aspect of the Kalish are. And once again, you can also say what the next species should be for the next video in the series. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Thanks.